Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I'm going to continue with the Jewel missions. We've got the Paul Probe, Bop Probe, Jewel Oasis and Jewel Supply mission and also the Paul Water Fountain. But I have to make sure that whatever I do with these guys I have to do them in the time before the emergency habitat launch needs to be resupplied or rescued. Really we're going to pick up those two crew members and bring them back home. But uh, I'll get these done with first and I'm gonna leave about 10 days to deal with the emergency habitat launch. I think that'll be enough, especially since we're on Earth time days, you know, 24 hours instead of Kerbin time days. So yeah, that'll be plenty of time, but I'll have to watch that to make sure I don't go over. So here we are first with the Paul probe and if we take a look, it is simply entering the SOI of Paul in three days and that's the first thing that's gonna happen so our goal will be to get into orbit around Paul land it and hopefully with enough fuel to get back home that's gonna be a bit of a trick it'll depend on how much Delta V we actually need to use to uh, slow down and get into orbit alright so here we go let's just plot for a basic orbit You can see it's got to take a lot. Yep, uh, 1,142. Let's go for 25 kilometers. Sounds fine. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know about recovering this. We'll transmit uh, some of the information. Let's see. Do we have anything that we could do right now? I mean, I'm sure we've done science around Paul before. Let's just double check. Temperature scan can't be done right now. Okay, well, this is not 1.0, so that's how it is. Okay, that's fine. Again, we can refuel it if necessary, so we've got the pipe endpoints, so we'll just leave it in orbit around Paul if I decide we can't get back to to Kerbin. Probably you'll have to remain in orbit around Paul for a while anyway, just waiting for the right, the right uh, phase angle with Kerbin. Okay, how much time do I need for this burn? Well, it's a 10 minute stage. It probably won't take more than 3 minutes to do a thousand meters per second. Maybe about 3 minutes. I suppose we should do one goo container here, huh? Um, yeah. Oh, we had a contract to fulfill, didn't we? Yeah, we have a contract to fulfill. So uh, let's trans. I mean, recovery would be great. We'll try and recover the Science Junior information from the surface, but right now we'll transmit this in space high over Paul. Yeah. So we'll fulfill that part of the contract. Could have done the thermometer scan, but. Maybe I should have done the thermometer scan instead. For the surface, I'll transmit the thermometer instead. Okay, you're getting close to orbit. We have an orbit. And 25, I think I was going for. Okay, there we go. All right. So now we are like that. Our periapsis is on the lit side. Maybe starting descent maneuvers here would be good. Sort of really bumpy all together, isn't it? Can't really say, oh, there's a nice smooth spot. Okay, so let's make that kind of adjustment over there in order to begin descent. Alright, that'll moderate our approach a bit. And now... Landing. That's a bumpy place. Well, let's get the landing gear down. I don't know if we're low over Paul yet, or if a thermometer scan can be done low over Paul. Nope. Okay. 
Maybe I should uh, keep a low Rapal mystery goo. We do have a seismometer there for the surface. Yeah, okay, I'll observe mystery. Well, it's better to do it on the surface. It's probably not low over Paul right now, anyway. This spot actually looks quite tolerable, doesn't it? That's there. Uh, maybe you can land in here. I mean, I guess that looks a little bit more bumpy. I think I like this spot better. Let's do it quickly. Okay, we are on landing. I suppose we should have surface info out. Not the surface info I want. I actually, I wanted to get the, the suicide burn countdown. Oh, I have it down there. Right. All good. Before we land, let me try the thermometer scan again. Okay, uh, I don't know why we can keep it, I mean, uh, why we get better f for keeping it. I mean, it should be just all of it transmit. I'm sure that's how it is in 1.0, right? I think. Anyway, we transmitted that from low over Paul. Coming straight down now. That should make the suicide burn countdown a lot more reliable. It's a little bit uneven, but it could be worse. It looks like it might be enough to get back home. It's tough to say. I mean, Jewel. Well, I mean, we'll get into orbit around Paul, and then this, and then uh, maybe plot it out and figure it out. Got extra levels of patch conics in this, so we'll probably be able to see exactly how much it'll take. I never entirely trust that suicide burn thing. Well, here. Well, obviously that was not right. Unless we're already on the surface. Because it went to zero seconds, I went full thrust, and... No. Now it's at 13 minutes. I have no idea. Okay, so. Do not trust the suicide burn countdown. What the heck, anyway? Jeez. Of course, this is... Oh no! The what? What? No, I was... We, we were not on the ground. Ah. No. That did not look like the ground. So it was right-ish? I think I I think Paul's glitchy. I mean, it didn't visually look like we were on the ground, right? You guys can rewind and figure that out. Uh, I'll figure it out in editing. But uh, hmm, that's nasty. That's very nasty. Have we done that before? Has that been a problem that I've had before? I vaguely remember. This sort of thing. <sighs> well, there goes that contract. Oh well. Moving right along. Bop. Let's hope it's not the same way. I have to say, I'm not getting any warm and fuzzy feelings about the way this episode's gonna go now. Um, yeah. This is not great. Alright, so uh, we're going to have a little adjustment there, it looks like. Is that right? Well, no, that's a dummy adjustment. Um, and then we're getting into a bop encounter. Very high pass of bop. But, whoa, 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 okay. So not as bad as Paul as far as how much it takes to slow down. Well, I guess somehow our instruments were calibrated to Imperial instead of metric or something on the Paul probe. Hopefully, uh, the guys at, uh, I guess we call it Clockheed around here, will get it right here. I don't know. 
Oh, I evidently can't do the thermometer scan yet. I am gonna do the mystery goo. We gotta transmit that. If our previous experience has shown anything, is that we should probably get a few things done. Maybe 25 was an unlucky number? We'll go with 27 this time. Um, so yeah, well you can imagine how I feel. I mean, Bob, you know, bears some resemblance to Paul. We're in the exact same probe. And yeah, here we go again. Once again, periapsis is on the daylit side. I think Bop is even bumpier than Paul. It's not quite as sharp, but still. Okay, hopefully the Kraken will be satisfied with one probe. That is sufficient sacrifice to the Kraken, hopefully. Let me follow the pattern and do another mystery goo here. Or no, uh, we didn't do a mystery goo. We were able to do a thermometer reading, weren't we? No, we can't. Okay, mystery goo it is. Oh, well, we shouldn't, uh, because it's still high over Bop and there's no real benefit. It's a big old mountain in the way there. Seems to be a plateau over here we can land on. Or is this that? This might be that plateau. Maybe I should just stop here. No, uh, this is, looks more like that bulge there. Maybe. I don't know. That's pretty looming. That's that's that that looms right there. Let's not go any further. I don't know. Maybe I should trust the suicide burn countdown as an indication where the surface really is and go really slow. But I feel like no matter how slow I was going, I was probably gonna glitch into Paul. It was probably not my velocity, it was probably more like I ended up like below the surface, somehow glitched into the surface. I think that's what happened. Maybe I'll get surface info out to see how high it thinks I am. Seems like an important piece of data. Okay, we're at two kilometers. Twenty seconds on the suicide burn countdown. Let's go a little bit slower as we approach. Let me try and keep it to like 7 meters per second. It's not the safest landing speed, but you know, a, a probe won't spontaneously destruct at 7 meters per second. So just a little bit of thrust every now and again popping out of the engine nozzle. Okay, I see my shadow. Okay, we have a safe landing on Bob. So much nicer than Paul. Okay, gotta compliment your moons of jewel whenever they cooperate. Here we go. Materials Bay, I'm gonna keep that data. Uh, let me do the ones that I really want to send. Seismometer. Oh, uh, it doesn't allow me to do it. Oh yeah, seismometers work a little bit differently in this version of uh, colonization. Let's see. Log. Okay, let me transmit this data from Bop's Peaks. Okay, well we got signs, so we fulfilled that contract completely, right? Yes. So we'll keep the data from the mystery goo. Keep data. Okay, so now we've got stuff that we want to bring back, and let's get back into orbit because there's no point just leaving it on the surface. and then it'll wait in orbit for its transfer. I think it looks like we'll end up with more than 2,300. That should be enough to get back home. Let's get to 50 kilometers. Hopefully that'll wipe out most of the time warping restrictions. Okay, coasting. And we will get to add a new kind of alarm. And this one will be a transfer window alarm from from Jewel to Kerbin. Looks like in 81 days. 
Okie dokie. So next, Jewel Oasis and its CRT. Okay, so here we are with the Jewel Oasis and CRT. You can see the CRT perched up there. Jewel Oasis. Um, taking a look here because we remember what happened with the Drez Oasis. Sudden loss of water because it was converting it all to... Possibly because it was converting all to fuel. I'm still not entirely sure about that because it sure didn't seem to have much fuel there. But uh, this doesn't have any conversion going on. It still has plenty. It still has plenty of liquid fuel and oxidizer left inside of it, and it's actually still attached to its its transfer stage, which has 104 meters per second, which will be enough to make this burn. I assume this is a burn to get close to one of the moons of Jupiter in order to make orbit but it's a little bit tough to see and every time I click to try and focus on Joule it uh, it gives me the maneuver node instead uh, which is fine I'll, I'll trust that I knew what I was doing when I made this node so let us just point to the node and it's gonna take a little bit of time for this to turn over there and then we'll do this burn if it turns out that I made a very wrong maneuver well that'll be something we'll have to fix here we are, alarm clock is slowing us down in the time warp. We're gonna get rid of the alarm. And that's probably close enough. Let's have KGR settle things down. Alright, ignition. Okay. So, while we're not crashing into Jewel, that's the first thing to double check. Now, can we focus... Oh, well, we've got another node, it looks like. Oh, uh, it looks like we're manually getting into orbit around Jewel, is that right? Hold on. Let me add an alarm for this next thing. Uh, nine days. Okay, well, um, hmm. Yeah, it seems like we're actually burning at Jewel periapsis in order to get to orbit. I guess that's all right. Well, that'll be in nine days. We've got other things to focus on. Jewel Supply Mission and the Paul Water Fountain. So let's get to that. And actually, even after we deal with the Paul Water Fountain, we can try and figure this out and maybe aim it at something else. But I guess we weren't really in line with any of the moons to help us out with this one. Well, this Jewel Supply Mission doesn't have much Delta V at all. And so it's a good thing that its maneuver is apparently a null maneuver. So what was I trying to do with this? It looks like this is actually aimed for a lathe encounter, or a, yeah, lathe encounter to get us into orbit. Get rid of that. I guess we were just checking to make sure that this was a thing. I mean, it looks like it does the trick. And we sure don't want to use any delta V from here. 1,107 is no good. We'll have to use that to get to some of the moons if we need to resupply. That's what it is for. Or presumably other things will come over here to get, or wherever this is, to get the supplies. I'll open the shield just in case. Okay. Well, so that was just a pay attention to me maneuver. I'm going to add the lathe SOI change manu uh, uh, alarm. And that's that. I think that will do. Okay, Paul Water Fountain. Now this Paul Water Fountain does have a maneuver of 1.9 meters per second. It looks like it's in order to get this lathe encounter. It looks like it already has a lathe encounter, we just wanted a tighter one. And potentially one that would get a good position with respect to Paul, I'm sure. Paul might not be the best place to put a water fountain now that I think of it. First of all, we don't actually know if it has water. Uh, well, actually, we do still have a probe around it. Oh, we do have a quad probe pack probe, so maybe we do know. Okay, in that case, that's fine, but landing on Paul seems to be a dodgy business. We'll, we'll make our way over there for now, but we'll have to be careful about that place. This is all it is. It's a lander with drilling units that will drill for water. So, given our recent experience with Paul, maybe this is a dangerous proposition. Pretty much perfect. Smart ASS didn't even try to turn it. Uh, well, that's interesting. 
We're uh, pretty close approach to Paul right there. That won't do us any good though, we'd be going too fast. This doesn't have much delta V to slow down. So uh, we'll go with the lathe encounter. Okay, let's add that as our next alarm. So I change alarm for lathe. And it looks like that's the next thing we need to do, so let's just proceed. Oh, I think this close encounter is actually after we pass by lathe. That's good. So if we could do just a little adjustment burn over at uh, dual periapsis, maybe we can uh, make this work out for us. But let's pass by lathe first and verify that lathe is a safe periapsis. It is. It's uh, 866 kilometers there. Maybe we can do an adjustment at lathe periapsis, but generally that doesn't seem to work out very well. But let's check. So here at periapsis, add maneuver. Oh, there we go. Paul periapsis. Okay, well then I guess that'll work. Doesn't change the dual periapsis very much. All right. So uh, node. And here we go. Whoa, that was too much. And we don't have. Well, let's see what happened. And we don't have any mob propellant. Uh, did that work? No. Okay. Well. Uh, uh oh. We're getting a Tylo periapsis bonus. Uh, it looks like that's afterwards or what? Anyway, there's a Paul encounter there, and the Tylo periapsis isn't too close. So let's just work with it. Uh, okay, right. Obviously, we can't add a new alarm because we're still in lathe SOI. Let's pass through lathe SOI. Okay, now everything went bad, <laughs> because I time morphed too fast, probably. It was only a 0.5 meter per second sort of situation. Anyway, I'll correct that dual periapsis here. That does give us a title thing, it looks like. Can't avoid that. i got to stick with this one, I think. Uh, when does it actually hit Paul? Oh, in 12 days. Okay, so we can't stick with this one. And it looks like it, we actually hit Paul first, and then come around and hit Tylo. So, alright. Let's just uh, pass through the... the orbit of Tylo. We are not actually passing by Tylo. Okay. It's only after... The, oh boy. Something went wrong there. No, what? Hey, we, there wasn't any Tylo. Tylo's way over there. We didn't get influenced by Tylo or anything. What wiped out our our encounter with Paul? That's not right. Maybe it's just prioritizing the Tylo encounter, and we will meet Paul. That doesn't look like we would meet Paul before. I think we're going out and Paul makes a whole orbit and then we come back and hit it, but maybe. Alright, um, let's make a, a maneuver at Apoapsis to check it out. Okay, so now we have a node at Apoapsis and if we tweak it a bit maybe we'll get our Paul encounter back. Or maybe it'll just be mean. Uh, it's just got me. Whoa, it just got rid of that. Whoa, glitchy, glitchy. I think I need to restart. Okay, glitchiness, bad. Interface gone. Mm, yeah, it's not doing things right at all. Okay, I'm gonna restart the game and then come back to this. Alright, jumping back to this Paul Water Fountain. We find it. It's still at dual periapsis right now with its. Paul encounter there. So I guess uh, the game must have had some sort of glitch and then uh, create the save file. Probably for the best. Um, it said just now that we had water running out in the Drez water fountain. Let me just double check that that's alright. Not Drez water fountain, Drez Oasis. Now that's because the Drez Oasis just has uh, really high capacity. It's fine. Okay. I'm gonna try and be careful about time warping this time. 
But I do think it was like because we were hitting the RAM limit and uh, things were starting to get a little bit glitchy. Taking a good look at this, the blue line is our current pass, the purple line with the green encounter is after this. Uh, it's still... Yeah, I I'm sure we have a Paul encounter there. Let me try and plot at Apoapsis. It's not gonna let me. I'll come out of Time Warp in a sec. There we go. Paul encounter as as desired. Can we, uh, does, that, does it turn out to have an encounter for less? No. Okay, so we do have to make a little maneuver up out there. Call it 8 meters per second. And I will add that alarm because it's after the Jewel Oasis stuff. Okay, so with that there, let's turn back to the Jewel Oasis. So with this, I'm not entirely sure where I want to end up with it. It's got some Delta V with its uh, nuclear engines, the Oasis itself. For now, we'll just focus on getting into orbit, and we'll see what kind of encounters we can get after that. Might be a little bit of a trouble. We really want it in orbit around one of the moons, but not if it costs too much. We want it in orbit around one of the moons because otherwise it's gonna be potentially flung out of the system accidentally. Okay, we are now lined up. Let's go. We will be ditching the transfer stage this time. Okay, that's that. And it'll just be flung out into interplanetary space, it looks like. Alright, that looks like good staging. So, set. And ignition of the Nervas. Not much acceleration on these guys. How much food, water, and oxygen does it have? Uh, well. Oxygen is about 700 days. We probably have a recycler of some sort on board though. I think we've got this water splitter could split water into oxygen and whatever else. Only 13 days for the emergency habitat launch. So maybe I'll uh, complete with the Paul water fountain. We'll have to make sure that this doesn't accidentally hit anything. We need to pay attention to this. I'll create a dummy maneuver just to make sure I pay attention to this and uh, fix its orbit around some moon before it hits something. Okay, we have orbit. It is a very long orbit, but it's coming down quickly. Okay, we are now below our planned orbit, so let me get rid of that. Let me just retrograde there. Let's see what happens here. Well, not where I was intending on hitting it. And we might still miss it depending on how these close. It might be that the target position will be over here. You can see it's sort of slipping away from us. Oh, there we go. Okay, good, good. Uh, let's get a physical time warp. Come on. Auto saving. Uh, let's get nice and close as much as possible. If we can't get low enough, we'll probably have to do a burn at Apoapsis to get closer, or maybe that descending node there. Okay, that's the minimum there. Um, that's pretty good. We'll do that before the Paul Water Fountain. And the Paul Water Fountain will be the last thing because after that we really need to do the emergency hab and I'll start on that in the next episode. Yeah, it definitely looks like more of an inclination issue, so I'll go with the descending node. Let's focus in on Val. I want it uh, relatively equatorial. I mean, it'd be easier to hit if it was polar. I mean, from the surface, I mean. But uh, Equatorial will make it easier if we want to transfer to another moon. Okay, well, 104 meters per second does not sound too bad. Can make it a little bit lower. That's probably a bit too low. 64 kilometers is good. And if we add another maneuver, 
check out how much getting into orbit it will cost. Let's just go for that. 1080, we have that. That's the plus side. The minus side is uh, it's going to take a long time to burn. But I guess we can manage it. Let's see, the encounter will be 40 minutes. Yeah, we can definitely burn within that kind of time. Okay, so there's the plan. And we can just proceed with it right away. Okay, 0, 0 0.0. And that's the burn to get into orbit around Val. Okay, so let's get into Val SOI. Okay, we have our approach. Looks like pretty much what we planned. I'm estimating it'll take up to 10 minutes to get into orbit. Maybe a little bit more than 10 minutes. Obviously, I'll be physical time warping through it. We have our carbonite scanner. Not a water scanner. We don't have one of those. So yeah, the scanner around Paul is also a carbonite scanner. Gotta remember that. So next series of dual missions we'll have to send water scanners instead okay getting close to orbit now orbital period going up quickly and now coming down okay we are in orbit but it's a very high orbit so we will bring it down one thing is I don't want to have us lower our uh, periapsis, sorry, uh, wrong way, wrong way, uh, is that, what? no wait, that was the right way, that was the right way. So let's make sure, sort of like that, and keeping that periapsis up. Uh, I better take it out of physical time warp if I'm going to turn all over the place get the wiggles and snap apart okay I think that's good enough for the time being we're over here it's not very efficient to burn like this so I'm gonna shut down here we would wait until periapsis again before trying to drop the apoapsis down we're doing a really horrible job right now trying to burn over here to drop the apoapsis and we've got a nice periapsis of 60 kilometers so that's good Okay, we do not have to create an alarm for this. We'll pay attention to it when we need to. Uh, the next thing is the Paul Water Fountain. Okay, so this is going for its correction there, but its actual encounter with Paul is in eight days. And that's after where I want to start dealing with my emergency habitat situation. So we'll uh, do this burn right now and conclude with it. And we'll schedule the encounter with Paul for after we handle the emergency habitat evacuation. Okay, here we go. Let's hope this does what it's supposed to do. Seems to have serious effects on our resulting orbit there. Hmm. Okay, that's 0, 0.0. Okay, taking a look at it, yeah, alright, so we have our Paul encounter and no Tallow encounter now, that's why the orbit was changing so much because we were losing that, but uh, that Paul periapsis seems like it's like winking in and out, I'm gonna add the alarm while it's still there. Okay, so that's in five days now, and TAC Life Support says food, water, and oxygen remaining at the emergency habitat is 10 days, which is where I wanted it to be when I turn to it. Okay, so we will get to that in the next episode and then we'll proceed with completing our jewel stuff there and we'll also probably be looking at the at the tech tree again because we've accumulated some science and maybe we'll get to spend some of that to unlock stuff that through all this time we have not had access to. Alright, so I look forward to that and on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.